all the tools that you'll need for this job. The only additional thing that I've probably got, which you may not have, is a half inch drive rattle gun to undo the crankshaft pulley. So you may need uh, a bit of a hand with that. You may need a long breaker bar um, to get the pulley bolt undone. You may need to try and lock the flywheel somewhere. I do explain in the video that there may be a hole in the bottom of the clutch cover. Uh, yeah, the bit on the bottom of the uh, engine there may be a hole there you may be able to jam something through to lock the flywheel to be able you to undo the crank pulley but apart from that obviously 19 mil socket to undo the wheel nuts um, an 18 mil socket to undo the crank pulley half a uh, 3.8 drive ratchet with a couple of extensions and I believe this is a T50 Yep, that's a T50 um, Torx bit. Uh, a 7mm socket. Uh, quarter drive ratchet. A 10mm socket. Couple of different length extensions. This is only an extension. It's just got a handle on it as well, which makes it handy. Uh, so yeah, that. You need a trim tool or a couple of flat blade screwdrivers you might be able to get away with. Half inch drive ratchet for turning the crank. And I can't remember what size this little bugger is. I, I do mention it in the video. I think it's, oh, I can't get it out of there now. Let me see if I can see it. No, don't know, but I do mention what size it is in the video. So if you're gonna watch the video, um, they'll tell you what that is. And just three spanners, a uh, 16, a 15, a 13, and a six mil Allen key. Uh, there is another couple of additional little bits that you need to lock the engine, which is two drill bits. One is an eight mil drill bit. What size is that one? I'm pretty sure that was a five mil from what I can remember. Yep. A five mil drill bit and an eight mil drill bit and that will be to lock your cam and crank um, so yeah there's the old belt I've already done the job I'm just doing the intro after I've done the job so there you go there's your two pulleys you'll be changing your belt and like I said I do advise to change the water pump as well it'd be good practice to do that while you've got it all apart and there we go so uh, I also do advise you actually watch the whole video before you attempt the job. The main reason for that is there are a few bits which I do come across that I do wrong in the video and advise you how to do them a bit easier, you know. So, like for example, putting the uh, cam belt covers on, you need to put the engine mount on before you put the cam covers on. But like I say, I do go through every single little bit of that in the video. So please watch the whole video before you start doing the job. It will make it a lot easier for you because uh, like I say, I haven't done one of these before on this particular engine. So it's a learning curve for me as well. And hopefully you can make it a lot easier than what I did. So if you're not subscribed, please consider subscribing. I will probably be doing a few more videos like this uh, in the months to come, years to come. So press the subscribe button and uh, hope you like enjoy this video and hopefully it's very helpful for you. Take care. Yeah, so this is a 2002 Peugeot 206. Like I say, it is a hunk of junk. It's got many, many defects. I don't think there is a panel on it that is straight, unscratched, etc. So, really doesn't matter. We bought this car about four years ago for £250. And, uh, yeah... My daughter learned to drive in it, and it's actually been a fantastic car. So, here we go. Let's get that bonnet up and see what we're up against. So, this is what we can see. And as you can see, looking down the side there, it's not a great deal of room, but you know, you can probably get your hand down there. And I believe a lot of this is done via the um, wheel arch as well. So. <clears throat> we've got to take the wheel arch liner out but yeah there we go that's what we can see up here so let's see if uh get the car up on the ramp take a look from underneath now
And now looking from underneath, now this has had the under tray removed. Um, I've never actually had the under tray on it, if I'm honest. It broke when I first got the car, so I literally just tore it off and threw it away. But uh, yeah, you once again can't really see a great deal from under here. But once this wheel arch liner is out the way, I think, and the wheel of course, and that's something else I've got to do. I've got to put new tyres on it today as well. So yeah, so once this wheel's out the way and the wheel arch liner, I think that'll open up a lot more for us and we'll be able to see what we're doing. And you'll be able to see another bodge I did on this car as well when we first got it. So, right, let me get this wheel and wheel arch liner out and I'll bring you back. Right, on this video, I'm gonna try and tell you all the tools you need as well. So, <clears throat> just there, there's one little torque screw. And then under the front, you've got another one there and another one there. Uh, and then you've got these little uh, clips that you've got to pull out. There's still one more to pull out here, which I shall attempt to show you. Let me get my little trim tool. Oh God, now what have I done with that? I'm hoping this not to be a comedy show. Let me find my trim tool and I'll get back. Right, I found it and I'm back. Oh yeah, and these uh, Torx bits as well, they're a T20. So these are these little clips. Ideally you need one of these trim tools unless you're pretty good with a screwdriver. A screwdriver will do the job as well, which I used for many years before I had one of these. And there you go, they just pull out. You've got to pull the center bit out first. And there we go. So hopefully this should just pull out now. Now, whether I'm going to be able to do it with one hand, who knows? Oh, oh well, there's... Okay, so there's first lesson learned. I think you only need to take the front half out and not the back half. Cool. Okay then, so now there's this other little shield, which, oh, looks like you might have to take a bit of the back half out. Um, no, you don't. No, you don't. You don't have to take that back part of the wheel arch liner out at all. So if you're watching this and doing the job at the same time, put them bits back. Right, now we need a 10 mil socket to get this little cover off. Let me go and grab a 10 mil socket and whiz that off. So that's cover number two off. So you need to remove both of those and that exposes the crank pulley and the air con pump. Obviously we can ignore the air con pump and ignore most of the oil leaks as well. So next thing we've got to do is get the auxiliary drive belt off. And for that, where's the tensioner? There's the tensioner, that one there. So you've got to turn that and pop the belt off. Right, and for that you need a 15 mil spanner. we go and you turn it clockwise and that takes the tension off the belt now I can't remove the belt with one hand because I'm holding the camera with the other so I am now gonna take the belt off right. now that's the drive belt off uh, my next stop seeing as the car is up in the air already I'm gonna take the crank pulley off now a lot of you eagle-eyed people are gonna notice my next bodge uh, yeah crank pulley well the I think they call it a harmonic balancer that broke so I just welded the pulley solid, saved me buying another one. And uh, so far that's probably been like that for about three years and as a Mr. Beat, it's brilliant. So, okay then, let me just gun this uh, pulley off. Now they do say there is a plate you can take off of the bottom of the bell housing. Uh, no, this one doesn't look like it's got it. So yeah, you are supposed to be able to lock the flywheel up by putting a pin through the bell housing. Maybe it's through that hole, but yeah, maybe you'll be able to put something through that hole and lock the flywheel up. It's just to undo the crank pulley bolt, but I'm gonna use a rattle gun, so it's gonna make it a lot easier. Right, let me get this uh, pulley off next, and then we'll probably go up the top. A little socket on it that I use to do the wheel nuts, and it's not a 19, it's an 18. Fortunately, I didn't pull the trigger, so I didn't round it off, so let's see if this will undo. Look at that. Spot on. Whoa, drop the bolt. Right then, well that's the pulley off. Let me just uh, wiggle that and jiggle that and get it off. My best advice here is to always wind that bolt back in again. Uh, just nip it up. You know, don't gun it right up. Just, uh, just a couple of dinks with the old gun. Just to nip it, uh, because you will need that bolt later on to turn the engine over by hand. So 
there we go put that back in right um i was going to go up top but do you know what i think i might try and get this lower timing belt cover off now seeing as the car is here and it's on the floor so it's up, up in the air sorry and i'm not rolling around on the floor let me see if we can get this cover off so i'll tell you what i need right, for that like i say i'm bringing you along for the ride you will need to disconnect the crank sensor wiring from the timing cover and all these little bolts uh, i don't think you need to undo that one there because that seems to be for like a cover inside i've undone it and it kind of wiggles something around inside there so don't bother undoing that one there there's one there there's another one there there's one right in the middle and torch in the right place you can see that one just there sticking out focus and then there's a cheeky little one oh sorry about the light and the shitty camera work but there is another cheeky little one just behind the tensioner can you see it there you go so there's that one there too and which that one i haven't undone yet so right i'm thought i'd bring you in and show you what else you need to do and these are a seven mil by the way all of these seven mil i can confirm you do not need to undo that bolt there and i can also confirm you can't get this cover off until you got the top cover off so i've now got to go back up the top and get them out and also another little handy thing these bolts they don't actually come out of the cover so if you're undoing them you just need to wind them till they go sort of wobbly and loose and then they won't fall out so you won't lose them so that's pretty handy well done peugeot right let me go up top and see if we can get this top apart now right so from looking on top of here the first thing I see is this wiring's in the way. I've already unclipped it from here and I've undone this clip here as well. So now I've found you can tuck that up under there and that gets the majority of it out of the way. This one, you can kind of tuck to that side. Ah, oh, looks like it may have been cable tied down at some point. That's obviously uh, broken a long time ago. So now I can see there's a bolt there, one there, one there, and I think there might be one in that little hole there as well. Yes, there's definitely one in that hole as well. So a few more seven mils to undo there, I think. Let's see if uh, that is all of them, or is there gonna be any tucked down the back there? Cause I don't know, it doesn't look too bad. So yeah, let's get all these ones undone. Let's have a wiggle, see if it'll fall off. Right, there is one more bolt right down the back. There's the cover. So you've got one, two, that little recessed one, three, four, and then you've got that fifth one at the back, which is easily accessible by putting your hands down the back here. It's uh, once again, another seven mil. Now it might be difficult for me to show, but there's also a cable clip. Oh, I'll see the screen, see if I can show you, yeah. So there's this clip that kind of pushes into a slot on the back of the cam cover there. You literally just pull that out. And that holds all this wiring harness. No, it doesn't. It holds the two fuel pipes going down to the tank. So, yep, now that's that out. And as you can see, that's exposed the cam belt now. Oh, it looks like someone's been there before. There's a little white mark on the pulley. Uh, let's have a look, see if it's loose. No, it's not particularly loose. But obviously we're gonna change it anyway. Um, right, what can I see from up here? I can see that we now need, will need to get the, oh, well, we need to take the engine. Is this the belt? Does the belt go round the engine mount? Yes, it does. Oh, we're gonna have to take the engine mount off as well. That's gonna be fun. Okay. Right, let's see if I can just crawl underneath and rip that bottom cover off now. Okay, the wiggle and a jiggle and the bottom timing belt cover off. That also shows why you can't get the bottom one off before you take the top one off because that bolt goes through the pair of them. So that answers that question. Also now you can see all the bolts a bit better. So if you need to look for them from underneath, you're rolling around on the floor like I did for many years. You know, you might have not have the access that I've got with a ramp, but uh, there we go. So there's all the bolts on the bottom timing belt cover lots of oil as well okay let's stick these to one side and 
like I say, it does look like we've got to take the um, engine mount off because it looks like the cam belt goes round the engine mount. That's not very clever, is it, Peugeot? It doesn't make it very easy. Um, where's my torch? So, you can see all the pulleys now. And you can also see the timing marks, which... Now, let's see if we get the torch in the right place. You see that hole in the back cover there? That lines up with that hole in the pulley. So that's one of your timing locking marks. So you bung... I think people are saying a five mil drill bit in there. I'll soon let you know once I actually get to it and I do it. So I think now is the time to turn the engine over by hand and get these pins in. Now, so once you've got your timing marks lined up, you can use drill bits because they're marked with a size. And for the top pulley, you need an eight mil drill. And for the bottom pulley, you need a five mil drill. So these work absolutely brilliantly. So sorry about no torch, but I haven't got the third hand to hold the torch. So there's our top one put in. And then down under here, once again, sorry about the torch work. The torch is kind of lodged, hold on, swap hands. And there's your top mark. And that one slides in there. So there's your two timing marks. So no need to put a little bit of paint on the wheel. Um, the other thing I have spotted you will need to do, you will need to remove the crankshaft sensor to get the belt off. So that's that one little 10 mil bolt there. Right, my next move, now I've got the cam and the crank locked, my next move is going to be detensioning the belt because I'm not gonna take the engine mount off yet because I still need to get underneath it and on top of it so I think that's the last thing I'm going to do. And hopefully I'll just be able to undo these three bolts here and just drop the engine down just to slip the belt over it. That's what I'm hoping. Whether that is going to be the case, I don't know. So if you're waiting to find out that as well, stay tuned because I will be coming to that bit shortly. So yes, like I say, my next stop, I'm going to detension the belt. So for that, I'm going to need to get back under the car. So I'm going to put the car back up on the ramp and see if I can find the tensioner and how that works. Okay, so there's a tensioner. That's that one there. And we've also got an idler pulley just there as well. So we'll be changing both of those. Like I say, I would advise changing the water pump as well, but I'm being a cheapskate and I'm not. So that's your water pump. Um, this tensioner then, by the look of it, you've got one, what feels like a sort of 12, 13 mil spanner. And then you've got an Allen key as well, which does the tension. Now, I don't know if I can really show you, I just can't see. Oh, let's get it up there. So there's your tension a bit. So what you've got to do when you tension the belt, you need to line that dot up between these two marks here. So this has got to be in line with in between the jaws there. Let me show you on the new tensioner, that'll be easier. There we go. So, as you can see, there's a peg in there holding this together. But when you tension the belt, that needs to line up in the middle. That tells you you've got the right tension on the belt. Okay. So, let me get, um, get it detensioned and get right, the belt loose. Tensioner completely removed. It's the old one, as you can see, covered in oil. And just to confirm, you will need a six millimeter Allen key and also 13 mil spanner just to get that tensioner off so my next thing is going to get that idler gear off do you know what i reckon we might have to take that whole engine mount off oh well that's no big deal so yeah let me get the idler pulley off now get that one out and i'll let you know what spanner size you need for that looks like about a 16 or 17 mil from the size of it but I'm let's now going back on my word you do need to undo that because this I don't know how it did get in and out of there, but this does need to wiggle out from behind there. Otherwise you can't get the cam belt off. So you do need to undo that. That wiggles out and then the belt will come off from around the pulley. So remove that bit too. That's bad news guys. You do need to remove the engine mount because you can't get that idler pulley off without doing it. So that's the next thing. I'm gonna put the car back down, get a jack under the sump, 
support the engine and remove that engine mount. Cool, blimey. Okay, yeah, so here we go, back from on top now. I've now removed this piece of engine mount. Much to my excitement, I thought I would have to undo that bolt, but my engine mount's broken. So, <laughs> and you know what? I never even knew, never even knew that was broke. So that's something for the future. Right, um, to undo the one bolt there, if you're using a drill and something long like I have, you're gonna have to remove the drill temporarily from the cam sprocket to uh, get that bolt. Uh, so now we've got to undo what looks like 17 mil, one, two, three of those bolts off of the engine block. So let me get a spanner or something to get down there and undo them. And then I'll bring you back and let you know how that went. And by the way, the torque socket you'll need to undo those bolts that go into these three holes is a T50. So that's a T50 to do that one. Right, got my 17 mil now. Let's see if I can undo all three of those without busting some knuckles. Just for comedy value, that's actually a 16 mil. So yeah, these ones here. 16. Right, and there's that part of the mount removed. Now there are four of them bolts, as you can see. One, two, the holes there. And there's another sneaky one down the back, which is really easy to get to, so no problem. 16 mil spanner for those. And now we can actually get to and see the whole camshaft set, the whole cam belt set up. So that's pretty good. So now let's get on and change this belt. You're watching this video before you actually tackle this job. Oh, let me try and get my camera down there. You can actually see what the uh, crank pulley lines up on. There's that little post with a hole in it. So if you're trying to stick something in there and you think, oh, maybe it's in, um, there you go. At least you know what you're aiming for now. Just ignore all the oil. Um, so now, I've got the new belt there. There's the old belt. Doesn't actually look too bad. It's not really perished or anything like that. So it's got a little mark on the edge of it there but nothing really to worry about that wasn't too bad now that is worth keeping because that is handy for using as a strap to lift an engine out of a car if you've got an engine crane right new belt i'm going to route the new belt on i'm going to put the tensioner on first so where are we there's our new tensioner so I'm going to bolt that onto the engine first and obviously leave the pin in there, get the belt on and then I'll bring you back once I've got that far. So let me get this, uh, let this tensioner bolted on. Right, now I've got the belt on. Now the little peg is still in the tensioner at the moment. I've literally just got the belt on. As you can see at the top here, there's a lot of slack. That doesn't really matter at this stage, but what you, where you don't want slack is here so just give it a little push there make sure it's tight there and tight down there as well you don't don't want any slack like you've got at the top there so now what you've got to do i'll see if i can do this see if i can balance that there or am i going to lose it in the engine no it's going to fall <laughs> it's not going to happen right um let me see if i can do this so you need your seven mil allen uh, six mil allen key now and let me just see which way i've got to rotate this let's just look at the old one quick there is an arrow so you've got to do it anti-clockwise so get your allen key in oh what a bloody fiddle this is doing it one hand rotate it anti-clockwise This is where you could ideally do with a six mil Allen key socket and have it in a ratchet. So there we go. Now you see the little peg move there. So now what you've got to do is tension it with one hand and pull the peg out with the other. Now, obviously I'm holding the camera, so I can't do that. So let me just stop this a mo. Ah, got impressed now, the button. So I've done that. Now it is very difficult to see that pointer which I showed you earlier. So don't take the Allen key out yet, but I'm gonna use this camera to help me see the pointer. Now look, it's bang on in the center. That's exactly where it needs to be. But you've now got to remove the timing pegs 
hopefully they should just slip out really easily. Let me just get this bottom one out. Yeah, they both came out really easily. Didn't have to pull hard on them or anything, so that's good. What did I do with my drill bits? Let's put them up there. So now what we need to do is do one full revolution of the engine by hand and then recheck that mark. It'll probably move. So, right, I'm going to put you down again. And I'm going to do one full revolution and come back to the timing marks. That's one whole revolution. When I say one revolution, I mean get the cam back in the position which it was in the first place. You don't have to get the um, pegs back in. Not at this stage. You just want to check that tension. Uh, where are you? And there you go. It's bang on in the middle still. So happy days. You can now then tighten up that centre bolt fully. Um, and I will recheck the timing marks, although you can see, especially with the camera, it's nice and easy. That one is bang on. Now this one's going to be a bit difficult because it's... Uh, yeah, there it is. And that one also is bang on. So I know that belt's good. Um, so yeah, I've got to tighten up the tension of bolt now and then get everything back together. Done. Right, so that's that bolt tightened up. Now, just one little check, just literally go around all the slack bits of the belt. That's that bit's too small to check. But just make sure you've got no really, really slack bits. They should all be fairly taut. And like I say, if you've been, done one revolution of the engine like I have, and you've rechecked that uh, tensioner marker, then you'll be fine, absolutely fine. Good, right, now I'm gonna do, put this back together slightly different, I think. I think I'm gonna put the cam belt covers on first and then put the engine mount on. So let me uh, bottom cam belt cover first and then the top one. Oh, and don't do what I nearly just did. Remember to put that bit back in. Okay, rewind, rewind. Um, don't put the bottom cam belt cover on first because you won't be able to get this in, so You've got to get this bit bolted on first, then the bottom cam cover. So don't make a mistake I've just done. I had to loosen it all back off again and then slip that behind the cam cover. So yeah, uh, get that bit bolted on first. Right, that's that mount completely bolted back in now. Um, like I say, I am a mechanic, but I am doing it on this engine for the first time, so as I'm filming this, I'm getting a, coming across all the pitfalls and all the things that I'm doing little wrong that uh, you could avoid if you're watching this video. So take it as a bit of a learning curve. So now I've got the first part of the engine mount on. I'm going to put the top part of the cam cover back on now. That looks like it'll be an easy time to do it. So let me go and grab that, pop it in place. In fact, I won't even stop the camera. Ah, another thing which I've forgotten to do. Don't forget to put that little clip back in the end of the cam cover. If I can see the poxy thing now. Where is it? No, nope, I'm gonna have to stop filming. That clip goes in there. <laughs> see, see, this is why you've got to watch this whole video before you even attempt this yourself because you won't be doing stupid mistakes like I'm doing. Um, and trying to get this in one-handed as well. It's not working. <laughs> I've got to put the camera down. Back in the some wiggling and jiggling. Just make sure you get the top part over the bottom part because otherwise you struggle. So now we've just got to do up all these bolts that hold the cover on. Um, and then, yeah, I think it's top part of the engine mount back on. Oh yeah. Don't forget that clip, hey. Don't forget that clip. Where is he? This one here that slots into the cam cover. In there. Don't forget to put that in. Don't forget to clip the uh, crank sensor wire back in as well because I've had this problem. I've come across this problem before. Oh, I can't hold the camera and show you at the same time. Yes, this little 
this little clip just here make sure you clip the crank sensor wiring in back in there because otherwise the crank sensor wire touches the drive shaft and it will chafe through and you'll end up having a breakdown right okay let me get that top cam cover screw back in that's the cam cover back on and uh, now to put my broken engine mount back in i'm going to change this at a later date because you know what i didn't even know it was broken it, it drives absolutely fine i suppose it only really stops the backwards and forwards movement of the engine so and it hangs on that bottom bit so even if it does break i don't suppose you'd really know would you as you can see the engine's shifted a bit where i've been tugging around on it so we're gonna have to get that moved back there we go that's balanced back in place so just a question of dropping all the bolts in and tightening them up lovely right let me tighten these three up and once again i'll be back in a minute right so now on fitting the crank pulley you may have noticed on removal but there is a lug there now that's got to line up with that lug there and as you can see on mine someone at some point hasn't lined it up that may have been me i've had this crank pulley off a couple of times because i've had new crank sensors and when i did the wiring and everything so just take a bit of a look make sure make sure you do line it up it doesn't oh, so i suppose it does really matter but it'll make the belt wobble if uh, you don't get it lined up. So let me just gun that bolt back in. Make sure we're going the right way. There we go. That ain't coming undone. Right then. And yes, I am really just going to leave that and not even check it. Because uh, that's an awesome gun, that is. Okay, so auxiliary drive belt on now. Let me get the belt rooted on and uh, we'll slip that on. Should be quite simple. Right, that's the auxiliary drive belt back on. Everything's looking hunky-dory. Right. So now it's a question of putting the wheel arch liner back in. And remember what I said, you don't need to take this side off. So just the front end. Right. So let me get this uh, bits of plastic back in place, get the wheel back on, and then it's uh, on the floor and turn the key, see if it works. So this is genuinely the first start. Now this car's always started on the button until the time the crank sensor failed, but uh, here we go. That's exactly what I wanted to hear. Marvelous stuff. <laughs> 